Hi, my name is Johanna. I make videos once in a while, or oh, very rarely now, but there's a good reason. And that's what this video is about. Basically, like, why have I been gone for a year? What have I been doing for a whole year? Well, first of all, you may be saying you haven't been gone for a year. What are you talking about? But I have. So um, as far as I can see on my channel, the last video I posted was November. So you're thinking, well, you've been here since November. So you've been here a bunch. But I think 10 of the past videos were filmed during the summer vacation where I was really bored. And then I just scheduled those videos for upload. So I haven't made a video since the summer vacation. Well, the, the last video I made was uh, in September. I did a whole bunch of little film clips uh, in the start of my PhD in September. It's almost been a year since I filmed a video. I feel like I forgot how to make videos. <laughs> now, as you may have gauged from the title, most of the time has been spent on my first year as a PhD student. That's of course the reason why I haven't been making videos. If you're only interested in that, have a look at the timestamps. You can just skip to whatever part you think is interesting. But basically right now is summer vacation. I know that the rest of Europe is having a, a drought, but it's incredibly rainy in Denmark. So a summer vacation with a lot of rain uh, just means a lot of boredom. So I figured now is the perfect time to make videos. I really want to make videos. I feel like it's a great way to do some, some dissemination. Part of my job as a researcher is disseminating um, knowledge, basically. <laughs> so videos is actually a really nice way to practice talking about research, for a different audience. So I really want to make videos. It's, I've been a bit sad that I haven't been able to make videos. Um, I can't promise that I'll get back into the habit, but I can definitely say that this very boring, very rainy summer vacation is a perfect time to make at least this video and maybe more, we'll see. But yeah, I wanted to talk about what I've been up to basically. So first and foremost, basically my whole life has changed. <laughs> I've uh, started a new, job yeah a PhD fellow is a job it's a new career path I used to be a teacher and and I expected to be a teacher for many years but still a, a whole new career path and a whole new city so when you think about it like new career path new job new city it it is a bit overwhelming and has been a bit it's a lot changing so that's why uh, videos haven't really been something I've prioritized I've talked to my bank uh 30 times or something because oh yeah not just new city, also um, new apartment. I bought an apartment. I've always been a renter my whole life. So buying an apartment is, is very huge and <laughs> very scary. This is it. Um, that's also why it's, it's a work in progress. We just moved recently. But yeah, everything is just, uh, everything is happening so much. And basically like all my money just went into apartment buying. So that's another reason why this, this summer vacation is, is a little bit bland. We, we are doing fun stuff, but there are also a lot of days that are just looking at the rain, basically. So yeah, a bunch of changes. And I think the biggest one being starting the PhD. Now I've actually been doing my PhD for a year. So let me talk a little bit about what on earth that is or what I've actually been doing. So one thing to note is that I'm doing my PhD in Denmark and that's a very different experience from doing a PhD in all sorts of other countries. Here it's a job, you get paid, but you also only have three years to complete the PhD. You can spend more, but then you don't get paid. So that means that one year is one third of my PhD. Like I'm already one third of the way through and of course that means I'm, there are all sorts of things that I'm supposed to have done. So far I'm um, following the plan, which is nice. I don't feel like I'm behind yet, but I hear from everyone that the second year is when you start thinking maybe I'm behind, you start feeling a bit stressed. So I figured I'd just go through uh, what I've been doing for a year. Talk about what the job actually is. I remember before I started, I thought it was a bit vague. I had no idea actually what was expected of me. I found some guidelines here and there, but what do you actually do? Like what fills the day? So that's what I figured I'd, I'd give you a bit of an impression of. In the beginning, it was a lot of 
figuring stuff out, like just going around talking to people. It's so important for me at least at a new workplace that I know who I'm surrounded by. Of course, like logistical things, who can I talk to about this, this and that, but also just uh, having a feeling that you exist in your workplace. I know that sounds weird, but um, it's very easy in a workplace to just mind your own business and to sort of be forgotten about, especially when you're in a new city and a new place and you don't know anyone. So that's something I spend a lot of energy on, showing people that I exist, uh, finding people to eat lunch with, uh, finding people to have interesting conversations with. Such an important part of, of a job description. That's why I, I classify it as a sort of task to, to figure out who you are or what you want to do and who you want to get to know, etc. In addition to the sort of social figuring stuff out, of course, there was also figuring out what my project was. So basically, when you apply for a PhD, you send in a five-page project description. So you already have a project. PhD funding is a lot of money, so they want to make sure that you know what you want to do before they give you the money. Of course I had a project, but I also had to figure out, like now I actually had the time to go deeper and figure out all these stuff that I wrote to get the funding. What do I actually mean? that what do i actually want to do do i does this actually make sense because once you start gathering the data once you start writing then changing your mind is a huge task whereas changing your mind a few times in the beginning is a i think a healthy way to avoid changing your mind later so i think that was a lot of of the beginning was just reading and figuring out if I actually wanted to do what I said I wanted to do. Finding a bunch of researchers, um, talking to them, seeing if they thought it was a good idea, if they had any feedback. And that's, as a researcher, a lot of what you do is getting feedback. So that's that's not just a PhD thing. I think that's a general researcher thing that you are constantly trying to talk to as many people as possible, get as many views as possible. And I know that's a bit vague, but it was a vague task. It was like just a few months of me reading, writing thoughts down, a lot of like um, diary writing, uh, a lot of introspection, a lot of talking to people, having meetings or just randomly meeting people in the hallway, talking to them. This sort of a circular movement of stuff going on and figuring stuff out. That's of course something that you do throughout the whole thing, but especially in the beginning. And in the meantime, I started trying to do as many of those specific tasks as possible. We have a, a certain amount of ECTS point that we have to do, so we have to take some courses. And I figured I would front load that to again, because when you do a course, you get a lot of a new knowledge, a lot of new thoughts. So I figured I'd do a lot of courses in the beginning. And I'm really happy that I did that. Another very specific task is that we have to teach. That's part of our work obligations, that we teach a certain amount of hours. That's also why we get paid. And a bit surprisingly, I ended up teaching from the very beginning. Basically, I'd planned to teach from my third semester, but I was asked, well, you have a teaching experience. Do you want to teach from the beginning? And I said, yeah, sure. I definitely was told I could say no, like no one forced me, but I figured it would be a nice way to get some of the teaching out of the way. And also because in the first semester, I had a bit of a hard time figuring out what to do, basically getting into the habit. So I figured it was a nice way to have something very specific to do. So a lot of taking courses and then some teaching. I taught English grammar to master's students who did an English minor, but not English in the sense. I know that in Anglophone countries, English means that you study literature. But here, of course, because English is a foreign language, it's a sort of English as a foreign language degree. Another task I did, which is sort of related to the figuring stuff out, was to try and find some interesting people. <laughs> uh, I ended up joining some different research groups and research groups are a super nice way to have a feeling of learning and progression. It's easy to feel a bit stuck, feel like, what am I even doing with my days? But in a research group, you have this feeling of progression because you experience the same people. We're all working on different projects, but we are meeting each other several times and you talk to people 
who have heard how you were doing two months ago and now they're hearing how you're doing now. They also present some of their project, which is really inspiring. So research groups are such a great way to get to know interesting people, get inspired from their projects and getting to talk about your own project. Another way to become inspired is going to conferences. So that's also a, a big thing. Like I'm supposed to talk at conferences soon, I suppose. <laughs> but I figured I really wanted to see as many presentations as possible, as many other researchers talk as possible before I start doing my own. I feel like that's like writing a book without ever having read a book. Like, of course, you need to see how other people do it so you can become inspired to do it yourself. So I've been going to as many conferences as I could. I went to one in London and then the rest in Denmark. Especially it was really nice for me to see anthropologists talk. I'm not an anthropologist, I'm a linguist, but I use some of the same methods that anthropologists use. So it's been so, so nice to see how they do it because they present in a completely different way than your average linguist. And it's been really inspiring. So when I get around to doing some presentations myself in the future, hopefully, I think I'll be borrowing from both linguists and anthropologists. So that's a sort of first semester has really been like there was the very specific task of teaching but other than that it's really just been sort of roaming around absorbing the culture absorbing academia figuring stuff out like constantly reflecting about what am i doing what are other people doing and how can i sort of learn from what they're doing that's like it sounds completely weird if you're not a researcher but that is a lot of what this job is is constantly doing this sort of circular motion to think and think with others and think on others and then my second semester i kept doing this but i also did a very big thing that i'm so happy that i've done and that was collecting data i won't be going too much into this but basically i think a lot of people here think that i'm researching reading. I am interested in reading, but my PhD, the PhD that I got funding for, is about youth culture and digital culture, basically. And I, I could talk about that for a long time. Maybe I'll make a video about it. But the long story made very short is that I'm, I'm working on the intersection between youth culture and digital culture. So the way I gathered data was that for half a year, I spent time in a Danish gymnasium which is like not, it doesn't mean anything with sports. Gymnasium is just our term for high school in a way. Uh, again, I, I would, would say Google Danish gymnasium or like Google <laughs> Danish education if you're interested in what gymnasium means. But basically spending time with teenagers, which has been so fun. Yeah, I mean, spending time out in the field the field with the young people, seeing what they do, writing notes, taking pictures, collecting uh, audio, sometimes video, doing interviews as well. Just half a year of just trying to become as immersed as possible in their lives and in what they do. And I, I feel like that's all I did for half a year. I know I did other stuff, but it's it consumed all my time, I feel. And then in, in the end, when I was almost done, there was um, a really cool conference that I wanted to um, send a proposal for. So that's the, what I did right before the summer vacation, was to like have a look at my data, show, show some of the video to some people who would give me some feedback, and then writing an abstract. For. I don't, if you're not in academia, I don't know how, many, how much of this makes sense. But basically, um, what you do if you're interested in talking at a conference, you write a small like half a page or under half a page where you outline what you want to talk about. Basically, you imagine that you're writing an article, a, a research article, and then you write a little summary of the research article even though the article doesn't exist yet. So that's what I've been doing. And then the big scary thing is that I'm waiting for a yes or a no. I think in October they'll say yes or no, and I really hope for a yes, but then that also means that I have to actually work on this, which is scary. Now it's time to write. <laughs>
now it's time to actually like so far i've just been writing down interesting ideas for articles my uh, my dissertation is article based so i just have to write a certain amount of articles but now i have to do it so that's a, a big scary task which is odd right like it's I spent five years at university writing papers constantly, so writing articles shouldn't be scary, but it feels scary. Luckily, I also have other stuff to look forward to. I have some really fun tasks, actually. I'm going to be working with some teenagers who are interested in research. They're going to do sort of research internships, so I'll be having sort of a, a small group of teenagers working with them, and they're going to make their own projects, so that will be so much fun. So not just scary writing, also fun tasks. In addition to that, I'll be working on sort of alternative dissemination. So basically a lot of what my job is, is disseminating stuff. And you can do that in a classical sense, writing research articles. But I mean, even just making YouTube videos about research is dissemination. And I'm really interested in alternative versions of dissemination. Like, working with teenagers is, I think, a really cool way to use research in a, in a real-world sense. I also have that to look forward to. I guess every time writing becomes a bit too scary, I can work on alternative modes of dissemination. So yeah, basically, my whole life has changed and I'm doing a PhD. Um, <laughs> is the TLDR of it all. I, uh, I'm really hoping that I'll be back with some other videos. I definitely want to do some videos about research. Maybe I'll also be doing some videos about other things. I will see. You know, I never promise anything. Yeah, but that was it for this video. Hopefully, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye!